mammals will always produce mammals, right? Vertebrate will always per produce vertebrates. Cordata will always produce cordata. Whatever you are, it's called a nested hierarchy. So we, we bacteria went one way, the prokaryotes, we're eukaryotic. So here's a eukaryotic group that had evolution. We stemmed from that, okay? A bacteria can never produce a human. It can never produce anything that's eukaryotic because we're on a different line of phylogeny, different branch. Bacteria to biologist. Evolutionists believe that bacteria can never become anything outside of that domain, and they are right. This cannot happen, nor has it ever happened. Yet, at the same time, they also claim and teach that it did happen, long ago and far away. So, we know today that the domain bacteria belong only to bacteria. They cannot change domains in any experiment, nor any that has ever been seen. Yet, they expect us to believe that this did happen because they need this to happen for their theory to work. They swear that complex eukaryotic cells ushered in a whole new era of life on Earth which all came from bacteria. So, when they tell you, no, we don't think humans evolved from bacteria, they don't know what they're talking about. So, uh, from the beginning, life went in three different directions and these are called domains. A domain is uh, one level up uh, from a kingdom in terms of classification. And we've got the well-known bacteria domain, but what we're mostly uh, concerned with here is the eukaryote domain. And the word eukaryote means true cell. And what happened was a process called endosymbiosis, where various type of bacteria combined together, one cell went into another cell to create uh, a more complex cell. With <laughs> they don't know what they're talking about. They do believe that because that is what the theory teaches. Originally, the bacteria had to swap domains and become a eukaryote, which later evolved into humans. How? Well, they tell us that these cyanobacteria evolved into multicellular organisms by either accidental mutations or some other unknown random process. I'll describe one of these dumb scenarios in a minute. But how did the eukaryotic cell itself evolve? And how did a worthless single cell bacteria without any thought make this evolutionary leap from a single cell in the bacteria domain to a more complex cell in the eukaryote domain? They have no clue at all, just random speculation and pure imagination. One guess is that the eukaryotic cell ate a free-living bacterium that had mitochondrial, which may have ended up staying as some sort of permanent house guest, which might have changed the cyanobacteria into eukaryotic. So they believe the cyanobacteria evolved into a single lineage into an entirely different domain through a process called endosymbiosis. No actual observable, testable, or repeatable science exists whatsoever for any of this, at any level. But don't worry, they will show you lines on paper that will explain it all. And don't forget, it's a scientific fact and true until proven otherwise. So yes, they do believe that we evolved from bacteria, an entirely different domain than eukaryotes. Exactly the opposite of what they try to tell you in debates. Okay, a bacteria can never produce a human. No matter what they try to say, they do believe that these bacteria went through endrosymbiosis and moved from the bacteria domain into the eukaryote domain. Oh, and this was all supposed to have happened 3.5 to 3.8 billion years ago. And never again, not even today, no matter how much they are forced to in laboratories. Today we're going to look at evolution and the history of life on Earth. We're going to trace the evolutionary journey from the earliest single-celled organisms all the way up to modern humans, step by step. So let's start here at the bottom. The uh, most simple type of life, a single cell, uh, came to exist about 4 billion years ago. And uh, we don't know exactly why or how. <laughs> mammals will always produce mammals, right? Vertebrate will always per produce vertebrates. Cordata will always produce cordata. Whatever you are, it's called a nested hierarchy. So we, we bacteria went one way, the prokaryotes, we're eukaryotic. So here's a eukaryotic group that had evolution. We stemmed from that.
Okay, a bacteria can never produce a human. It can never produce anything that's eukaryotic because we're on a different line of phylogeny, different branch. <laughs> the evolutionary tree of life. Bacteria, man, whales and pine trees, all related through common ancestry. And yet, what we see is that things are going down and not up. We observe devolution. Geneticists can see that it is a fact that mankind is degenerating and that forward evolution is not feasible. Deleterious. Bad mutations are accumulating faster than they are being selected away. This means that the human genome, as I've stated, is degenerating mutations and natural selection evolutionists look to as mechanisms that are going to take their bacteria like organisms into whales some evolutionists even deny this as you can see here with steve mccray they're so embarrassed of their science fiction based religion at the end of the day they'll claim that the earth was one time ruled by single-celled bacteria-like organisms. And yet, what do we see today? Observable evidence tells us that dogs produce dogs, bacteria produce bacteria, and whales produce whales. Yet they'll say that whales, bacteria, and man are all related through common ancestry. They'll look to nested hierarchies, but we do not see forward evolution. Mutations, for example, random changes, in the genome or in the instruction manual of life are almost always deleterious and will systematically destroy essential information. We see adaptive degeneration. We see that things are breaking. Devolution is being observed. These mechanisms work by breaking down genes. And that means evolution Sure, it can help species and organisms to change, to be different, to adapt. This is only surface level though, because it doesn't have the ability to build or create anything new or novel at the genetic level. Evolution falls short, and that means that it is impossible for a bacteria-like organism to change through incremental steps and stages into something as complex as a whale or a human being. It is science fiction religion at its finest. Picture a car. You want to get better gas mileage on this car, so you start throwing things away. Throw off the doors. The car is lighter. You get better gas mileage, but it's through breaking things, and it's long-term problems, long-term degeneration. We can see this in the famous long-term evolution experiment that deals with bacteria, that has proven that bacteria produces bacteria. Remarkably, in this experiment, all, or maybe essentially all, I'll give the evolutionists a few, but these adaptive mutations, they were reductive in nature. And at the end of the day, these bacteria, they're lazy, they're handicapped, and it's very significant that the few documented adaptive mutations in this long-term experiment were shown to be reductive in nature. In other words, involving the loss of function or loss of regulation. It's also very significant that the genomes of most of these E. coli populations actually shrank physically. It's ongoing genetic degeneration. There is no, as I've said before, there is no forward evolution. It only happens in the imagination of those evolutionists that want to believe in it so badly and this famous evolution experiment ever conducted involving bacteria that is being proclaimed by some to the world as dramatic proof, amazing proof, they'll say, of, of observable evolution is actually one of the most 
powerful and greatest demonstrations of genetic entropy and devolution. This is all consistent with the fact that bacteria-like organisms produce bacteria-like organisms, yet these evolutionists like Steve McRae here believe that a bacteria-like organism can turn into something non-bacteria. Nobody's ever seen it. The law of monophyly, we can never outgrow our ancestry. Yes, that's exactly what we would predict based on the biblical creation model of origins. God created original created kinds and they've adapted. They've changed through whatever means, but they've never outgrown their ancestry. That means a bacteria and a whale contradictory to, to those evolutionists with such strong imaginations are not related.